It's easy for me to say the American dream is alive because I'm a white guy. Yeah, my parents were immigrants who came to America dead broke and didn't even speak English, but they worked hard and made it. But again, they were white. It's much easier for white people, I'm told. If you're black, you face discrimination, racism. It's just much harder to achieve that American dream. And I hear this all the time from activists and politicians. Star Parker once believed it. Now she runs the Center for Urban Renewal and Education. And you believed it, and you were on welfare and said, I'm helpless, give me stuff. Yeah, I bought the lie of the left. Everything they say today, poor people are poor because the wealthy are wealthy. My problems are somebody else's fault. America's so racist, I got very lost, very reckless. Criminal activity, drug activity, sexual activity, ended up seven years in and out of welfare. Three but you were, years you were collecting. You oh, were... I was collecting a lot. I was on the long waiting list to get to Section 8, just watching my life spiral into a little dark hole. And after a Christian conversion, just changed my way. Bought the idea of freedom and opportunity. Went to school, got Religion a degree. Religion changed you. Absolutely. Not going to a libertarian conference. No, not going. <laughs> I did find out how libertarian I was when I started a business. Now, uh, Christianity changed my worldview, my moral uh, uh, perspective on life. But once I went into business and I started finding out just how heavy the hand of government was against business owners, I began to trend very, very right. And <laughs> obviously government makes it harder. We'll get to that. But is oh, it tougher because you're black? You know, it's interesting, this narrative of the left. You know, before you answer that, let me ask the, the audience here. Is it tougher for someone to achieve the American dream if they're not white? How many say, yes, it's harder? How many of you say it's not harder? The majority here. Freedom lovers understand American exceptionalism. They understand the American dream. They understand what we were founded on, the four principles of traditional living, of, of free markets, of limited roles of government. And so once you grab a hold of that, uh, you can be whatever you want in America. What has happened over the last 50 years is a, a narrative. A narrative has seeped in that they are born poor, so they're going to die poor in America, and that that poverty is somebody else's fault. So they keep this narrative of racism alive. Um, they begin to build within themselves a discouragement, and they don't think then they can mainstream. You know, I still spend I, a lot I, of time in the I heard in the that in, on our Facebook yeah. response. Well, and yeah. Callahan writes, the American dream is alive and well if you happen to be born white, straight, and male with wealthy parents. You, this, we keep hearing this, and, 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 and the reality is just not true. When people look at what's happened in the dynamics uh, with racial division, if you will, it's because of the welfare state concentrating poverty in certain communities, and yeah, it's overwhelming that hit the One person said poor. that. The American dream ended when the war on poverty began. Do you believe that? The American dream for some did end when the war on poverty began. And in particular, it's hit our poorest, our weakest, which disproportionately hits black people, because when you buy the lie that government will take care of you, then you're not going to move into self-sufficiency. And you get then trapped. And when government then begins to reward you for ill behaviors, you are really stuck. It's hard to get out of welfare. I was in there, and I'm telling you, it is very difficult. Once you get in and you find out about all of the other services available, it's you're committing social suicide to try to escape. Plus, you're also committing a little bit of economic discomfort because once you leave, uh, your life can become a little bit harder. You're also discouraged from being married. From 1890 to 1940, the black marriage rate was slightly higher than that of whites. You're right. Out of wedlock birth rates moved from in the 60s from 22% to today 72%. But these ideas of progressivism, they're equal opportunity destroyers because why but out of wedlock birth Let me just saying... tell you this. No, they, whites, it affected them too. See, this is not about ethnicity is my point. They moved from 3% out of wedlock birth rates to 30% today. So it's not about race, even though the left will keep trying to pretend that it is.